lovely Leo. Apologies for the sort of lack of light in the room, but we're kind of about to have a thunderstorm. So we're getting that effect, you know, when it feels like the sky has a plug hole and someone's just draining it. So uh, yeah, it's all a bit like Mordor. Anywho, right, let's take a couple of overall energy, oh, there's one, energy cards for you, lovely Leo, and see what you're up to, what your messages are. We're going to look at love life. We're going to look at life purpose, career, anything else actually that we need to know. Nice. This card has come up for everybody this month. Four of Cups. I know, is everybody just on some kind of, uh, like, meh? Nah. It feels like a sort of a lull. And I feel like, I think we've got lots of outer planets in retrograde at the moment. And it just feels a little bit oppressive. And for some of you, you may be in a situation where you're not 100% into something. And for a Leo, your fire sign, your fixed fire sign, you need to be into something in order to stick with it. It's just the way it is. You can do it for a while, and I know Leos that do do it for a while. Um, whether it's a job, whether it's a relationship, it's like, yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it a red hot crack, as they say on uh, Australian MasterChef. Um, but then you just think, I'm not sure. Okay, we've got the Eight of Wands, which is a card of communication and actually it's a card you're quite happy to see when you've had the four of cups because it's a bit of a ta-da it's a bit of a card of pizzazz okay so it's a bit of momentum it can be a conversation happening it can be information coming in or being exchanged either way stuff is happening where stuff wasn't happening and you're like at least something is happening for some of you as well, I think this is about um, an emotional conversation that you might have needed to have with somebody, but you might have been putting off or they might have been putting it off. Let's take a couple more cards. Oh my God. That glittery devil literally has come up in nearly, if not every reading nearly every reading okay that changes it a little bit chica, chica. old friend glittery devil i don't know if i've told you this before but i've done he came up so often in so many readings that my iphone saved him as like you know when it thinks it's being clever and it tells you who your sort of most frequent contacts are he's one of them and the knight of cups was the other i was like i'm i'm working too hard <laughs> all right these people okay so we have the devil which you know it's the devil but it's not just any devil is it this devil in the light seers tarot is one of my absolute faves if not it's this one and the morgan greer one i love that morgan greer one even though that one's got a fly trapped in a pentagram and it's kind of creepy this one this one is like somebody has actually worked out that it's not all no to the devil you know it's not all bad with the devil the devil can be a hottie and let's face it unless the devil was a hottie you wouldn't have any trouble with it would you so yeah okay when i put that together with the ace of wands which i think is such a leo-y card because it's an ace and because it's fire and because it's it's about kind of attraction and kundalini energy and a little bit of chicka chicka. When you combine that with that and that, because that is, it can be like somebody wanting to talk or something happening and momentum you know it is sort of sparklers it is wands it is fire it is chicka chicka okay so things kind of went from uh, <laughs> to a lot happening very um quite explosively actually which all right Okay, 
I'm going to take a couple more cards. I want to see which way this is going. It's not going to be boring, that's for sure. This card doesn't want to come out. I need to drop the whole deck trying to get it out. Okay. And then it drops itself on the floor. I'm going to take that as a thing. So look, we have the Emperor. Okay. The Emperor, obviously a fire sign card, it's Aries, it's the first, um, it, Aries is the first sign in the Zodiac, the Emperor is Divine Masculine, and if we look at these cards now in, the, in a row, just bring them down a little bit, I mean what absolute beauties these are. Look at them, they're gorgeous. If I could get my camera right. Right, okay. The Emperor is somebody stepping up. I feel like somebody's got game here. This person's got game. This person's got game. This card's got game. Game on. There's something on. It's fiery. It's attractive. It's seductive. It's tempting. Leo. Okay, we've got the Eight of Pentacles. So for some of you, if this is not your love life, and I'm going to look at your love life down here, and there will be an extended reading as there is every month, that will be the first link in the description box, and that is an extended love reading. We we'll do that at the end. It feels as if, if this is to do with career for you, it's about something quite glamorous. It's about, this is Eight of Pentacles, so this is Sun in Virgo, and it's about career normally. But it's also about work. And if this for you is about career, you're going to be tempted away from what you're doing, especially if what you're doing is a bit pedestrian and you're not kind of 100% into it. If it's not lighting your fire is probably a better way of putting it for a Leo. It's not doing it for you then yeah, you're going to be lured to something better, something more exciting. It could be something you create for yourself as well. So this could be starting a side hustle, becoming self-employed, doing something that's a bit riskier than what you're doing at the moment, something that's a bit fierier, that's a bit more kind of up your street. This can also be about relationships. And when you get the Eight of Pentacles and you've had a whole run of cards that's just like, I don't know, they're all sort of saying to me, attraction, you know, um, disco, not literally disco, but like there's fireworks going off is what I'm trying to say. I've got lots to say, but you can't really say it like I want to say it on YouTube anymore. So I'm, I'm being polite, okay? I'm being polite in polite company, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, that's interesting. So here we have the King of Cups. King of Cups is such a mysterious and interesting king. He doesn't necessarily... Well, no, on paper... He's not like the emperor. He's not really obvious. He's not somebody who is kind of like the king of wands, say, where they're much more out there. It, you can tell that it's very yin, but he's kind of, he's very emotionally sensitive. This is somebody who, in a really weird way, may really emotionally turn you on. And it's a different kind of, it's a different way from the devil and the ace of wands, but it's still, it's still capturing your attention, nevertheless. It's interesting. Could be a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Then we have the death card, which is Scorpio, but also the death card has come up in everybody's reading as well. We are in eclipse season, so we are eclipsing things and people into our life and eclipsing things and people out of our life. And I think very much what I've been getting about this eclipse season 
is if it's not for you, it will go by you. Sometimes with your blessing, sometimes not. You know, sometimes it's just like the universe is going to yank it and just say, no, no more of this, no more of this for you. Most of the time it's within our control and we're just finding that toxic people, and it's not going to be instant, you know, it's not a pot noodle, but toxic people are leaving our life, kind of putting a distance, keeping a distance. My God, look at that. Death card and the star. Okay. When it comes to your love life, there's something here with this King of Cups. There is a new way of doing things, the death and rebirth, okay? So it is definitely the end of a cycle and it's the end of a cycle of toxicity. For some people I've had this month, and I don't know if this is going to be similar, I've had that what used to be intoxicating is no longer intoxicating and that you are moving into a different cycle of attraction so that what you find attractive is something quieter but it still really floats your boat or lights your candle or whatever you want to say and I feel like well, I love that you've got the star though as well I feel like you can have what you wish for if you want something that is super hot if you want a fling if you want um yeah, you want something that is just literally going to transport you and have a lot of chemistry, that is available to you as a Leo most any time, I would say. All the Leos I know, people fancy them. Simple as that. You're magnetic, you've got fire, you're fixed. And if you think they don't, they probably do. Do you know what I mean? They People are attracted to Leos. It's a bonus of being a Leo. But also, every Leo reaches a point where, or most Leos, not every Leo, most Leos reach a point where they're looking for this emotional connection and understanding more than they're looking for this. Uh, or they still want some of that, but also it's just kindness. It's weird because as I was driving home before I started your reading, I was thinking about what some what a man told me once. And he said, if you're looking for someone to marry, just choose someone who's good in bed and out of bed really kind. And I thought, yeah, that's actually pretty good going. Do you know what I mean? That's That's a pretty good combo. So the star is telling you here, Leo, that you can have what you wish for but especially about this this is about somebody this king of cups who is emotionally in tune with you emotionally matching you emotionally sensitive but is able to step up and move towards you as the emperor in other words they've got the they've got the balls to actually do it and that's impressive because they may be a quiet type. They may be more yin. But I think that's just what you need at this moment in time. In terms of the star as well, make sure you're doing your manifesting, that you've got your vision boards going, that you're using the moon cycle and this eclipse time. Because I also think that for everybody, and you've also got a lot of creativity going on here, with this Ace of Wands and with this star, you've got a beautiful amount of fire that Leo needs, that kind of creativity, whether it's going into your relationships, whether it's going into a project, make the best use for it and take risks with your creativity and aim high, okay? I'm definitely saying that to all the signs. Most Leos operate like that anyway. Page of Cups coming in. So this is somebody, an invitation. I noticed that it's coming underneath the devil, which is very interesting. A few of you, and I've had this for a few months for you now, Leo, 
there is like some kind of person you used to know or an ex or it was a situationship or something where they've been kind of wanting to talk to you again, popping up somewhere, sliding into your DMs as they say. For some of you, they might want to apologise for something or some kind of behaviour. For others of you, I think this is a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or someone who is very, yeah, look at that, emotionally in tune with you. Ten of Cups, this is the ability, and I feel this as well with this King of Cups, it feels like it could go all the way. It feels like, this is like the kind of happy ever after card if you like, but it's important that it's the Ten of Cups because it feels water signy, it feels emotional, it feels deep, like it's on a really deep level. For some of you, you're leaving this person behind or the past behind and you're banking on something that is far more sophisticated and far more in tune with you emotionally. You know, far more in tune with um, your... What is the word I'm looking for? You're kind of... It's like a sense of emotional maturity. What you want has changed and you are open to things that you weren't perhaps open to before. And it's really weird. It's like when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And when the Leo is ready, the right person appears in your life and they are the right person. Then we get winner, winner, chicken dinner or vegan alternative, the six freaking ones. I mean, this is lovely. In the extended reading, I'm going to look at the devil card. I'm going to look at how they feel about you. We're going to do a reading about your person. So I'm going to use a different deck for your person. And also if there's a shadow side here and what is the best way forward for you? I'm going to take a couple of, yes, there it is. Your love oracle card is sparks. Well, that's it. It's like these sparklers and the fire. There's real connection here. There's a real sense of connection, but it's not how you normally feel when you feel connection. Oh, we've got destiny and it says a reunion with your twin flame is a destined event. That isn't for all of you, but it is for those of you where this person wants to talk to you, maybe wants to apologize. Okay, I'll have another look at that again in the extended reading as well because that has come up for you on and off for about six months so it's worth having a look at. Woof! Leo, if you want to join me for the extended reading it's the first link in the description box and the sparks will fly. I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.